Hey, just before we jump into the video, just wanted to say if you're already a subscriber, thanks a lot for the support, it means so, so much to me. If you are new around here and you haven't seen much or you've maybe watched one or two videos, please drop a wee hit on the subscribe button, it means so much to me. There's plenty of playlists, plenty of content here for you, no matter where you are on your Football Index journey, I'm sure you'll find something very useful for you. And let's get stuck into it. We are here, match day one of the new season is upon us. Um, returning with another Tuesday video, just try to squeeze it in towards the end of my day. Um, it's been um, pretty busy, but all good, all good. So let's just let's just get stuck right into it, guys. This is a team, uh, just to get you up to speed if you haven't checked out the last couple of videos, but we've got a really strong setup. We've covered pretty much every base going for the next, we could hold pretty much everyone here for three months and be quite comfortable. We might flip some of them a bit earlier, depending on what performances we actually get, opportunities that arise elsewhere, and anything else that might want to be lined up um, in terms of improving the team likelihood of you know, making money, making profit. Going into the season, we are now sitting at somewhere around the 27% mark in terms of profit on just this strategy alone. Um, there's buckets of videos you can go back and check if you want. The, Fair enough, the prices of everything might be out of date just because the the market's grown and whatever. But if you are going to be getting into a strategy like this, there's a lot of mistakes we made early on and that's why we've done it at the point of the season. You know, you can go and watch it, but we basically said, rip the band-aid off, let's just get stuck into it. We'll make all the mistakes we can and then start this season, which we're on the, 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 the horizon of the now, um, as profitable as possible. So if you are thinking about doing this, it's not just as simple as... You, you know, trust me, you, there's some stuff that you need to go back and get your teeth stuck into. As we discuss things, if there's anything that crops up, I will explain it as we go. But for your own, um, the, the very first episode, we set out some principles and some rules and that type of thing. And we've not had to edit or alter them, to be honest with you. So they are pretty rock solid, in my opinion. Even with all the mistakes we made, we still made like 8% profit over the, the last spell of the season. And that's with making mistakes and messing things up, you know. And in the summer, we've got out the other end of it with something like... 20 percent ish you know additional profit which is sweet okay so match day one starts on friday okay we have two games qualifying for us first of all we have liverpool the european champions returning back in against the newly promoted surprise norwich team who are managed by none other than a Borussia dortmund coach <laughs> you know and um, there's a bit of a trend going on with promoted teams the last couple of seasons you know and just that kind of Borussia dortmund success story um, that was kind of running for a few years under Klopp is it's obviously got a lot of legs to it and here we go again so going into the game you know there's not I think there's going to be too many surprises I think Liverpool's last match if you have a look at who started and I'm not going to do this with every game guys it's just because it's easy enough against City I think you're going to see a very similar team probably line up again against Norwich um, I'm not a Liverpool fan so Liverpool fans might want to come in and interject and Add something else. Guys that didn't play, you know, as much. You know, Keita might start. You know, Ox might start. But otherwise, by and large, I think the back five are all set. And then I say they're going to get as many of Salah, Firmino, Manny to play every match possible. You know, um, and because Manny's kind of delayed return, he's kind of a coin toss whether he will play or not. I think in most people's books, but I can see him going for Rigi just for safety. Norwich have been. A surprise promotion, I think, is probably the kindest way of saying it. You know, uh, not a lot of people expected them to go up. Um, and as we look at the transfers, Sam Byram, I think, is quite a shrewd transfer. I think they got him relatively cheap. Um, they've picked up a few Scottish players. That's interesting. Farman has been the kind of standout one that I've seen them pick up. You know, the Schalke goalkeeper is a German cap, and certainly any time I've seen him in Champions League or whatever. He's, you know, he's a big name. It's kind of like uh, Fulham getting Sherlock last year. And then we've got Paddy Roberts, who's got a lot of love, and Joseph Dermich uh, on Football Index recently. And if I can tell you being a Celtic fan, if Roberts does stay fit at Norwich, he will... It takes three men to get the ball off Roberts. I'm in Scotland anyway, let's see what that's like in England. But in Scotland, it took three men to get the ball off him without fouling him. And uh, you can look at his games. I watched pretty much every match he played, and that was pretty much a golden rule you know it just didn't happen otherwise um this game guys if i was doing any kind of normal betting i see goals all over it so depending on who you're holding and that and what and liverpool norwich has got previous for high scoring games suarez loved playing them and i don't think they'll be looking forward to welcoming liverpool back um but there's going to be goals there's going to be action so that first 11 whoever you think is going to be in it if you've got anyone eligible for ipds you're probably going to be in with a good shout of netting something there um in terms of key components it's, it just depends how dominant Liverpool are. If Norwich put up a good fight, it's first game of the season, then uh, you might get a Norwich player or two in amongst the dividends. I don't 
I, the side of IPDs, I don't see them really winning anything, to be honest. And then we have a bit of a headline act, you know, Monaco at home in Lyon. Um, Monaco's business this year has been odd. You know, they bought the goalkeeper from Montpellier. They've already got, like, two or three goalkeepers. So uh, we know one or two of them is injured. Obviously, Subotic is definitely injured. And I think Benaggio is injured as well. At the back, Zadibe sounds like he's going, you know. So Jonathan Panzo could be getting in there, and that could be a sneaky one you might want to have your hands on. Um... Otherwise, along this midfield list, I don't really... Adama Traore is probably a new addition if that's the guy from Gladbach, um, which it looks like from the picture. No, it doesn't. Um, the FIFA picture looks a lot similar to that. Um, and then up front, is, jo is uh, Falcao staying or going? Is he playing or not? Who knows? And they made Martins a permanent signing. So, a bit of an odd one from Monaco. Don't know how they're going to line up. Leon all changed. A lot of signings in. A lot of players out. And we expect them to be really attacking and really go for it. And with it being a single match day, it's going to really be, be between, in my opinion, uh, Leon and Liverpool players who's going to be looking to win, especially the star man, but any other dividend that's on grab. In terms of media, it's going to be the Liverpool player that stands out, or you know, the English game, whoever stands out more, it's going to be the media, unless there is a big European transfer, because by this time, of course, the English window will be closed. Um, so it's a nice single match day to wet the whistle and get us going. On Saturday, we have a, must be a treble match day, we just for the amount of games. 12, let me just double check. I'm 99% sure it is, but you don't want to have egg on your face when you do videos. And, oh, 12, 15 plus, good thing I checked. Um, so we've got 6 and 6, 12, definitely. Yep, excellent. So in France, there's quite a lot of even spread matches, you know, depending on who you're backing and, you know, what kind of players you hold. Nice, Montpellier and Marseille, all being at home, bodes well, certainly, for anyone who's holding anyone in those teams, I would say. And then in the Premier League, Man City West Ham has got goals written all over it as well. It's going to be a festival, you know. Pellegrini doesn't even coach defending, <laughs> you know. And Pep, you know, it's just going to be it's going to be a great, 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 great opening game of the season. It's one I'm most excited, excited about in the Premier League this weekend. I think just because I, I, I do like Man City, obviously. Bournemouth Sheffield, you know, it's hard to see how Sheffield will be setting up. We expect them to be solid, but you never know against the Bournemouth. They might fancy they can get at them, and it's points that they want to win, even with it being first day of the season. Um, Burnley Southampton, yeah, okay, <laughs> you know, we kind of know. Southampton are my kind of Premier League team where I'm thinking no one's talking about them. So teams like that, sometimes they can start off the first three, four matches. If they go and get like seven to ten points, um, they could start to get a. Uh, a good run and have a great season and get spoke about a bit more, which is good for any players you're holding there. Um, but I think they have, they've not had the call inches compared to many other teams, you know. Even Sheffield United get a lot of press because of Chris Wilder and that kind of thing. Um, Palace Everton, I think that'll be a really tight affair. And uh, I'm quite excited to see how Everton line up if they do. If they do get Zaha across the line, Zaha and Keane in that team is going to be, you know, Everton could be, could be, very very powerful this year you know Watford Brighton will probably um, oops, oops Watford Brighton I think will be probably quite open um, with Potter being in at Brighton wanting, he'll be wanting to win his first game regardless home or away or not and Watford obviously cup finals last year they'll want to be playing well and, you know, so I, I see a lot of action across the board here and in the late kick off Spurs v Villa Villa's first game back in the Prem um, a lot of index holders will be interested to see guys like Wesley and John McGinn and Jack Grealish and Spurs wow could they be lining up with Dybala you know could there be somebody else mad respect for Spurs if they sell Ericsson and buy Dybala by the way that is Levy in my opinion for that alone should be knighted <laughs> if he does that that would be insane business um, but yeah great 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 Saturday to get us going on a, on a double match day okay um, and then on the Sunday we have three six games and that will be a double match day also and we have Premier League Leicester v Wolves could be a hat full of goals very exciting game to watch Newcastle Arsenal I think if you asked me about two weeks ago as I said Arsenal run them over but Newcastle Jetro Williams um, I'm not sure if it was a right back they got but also Jolington uh, they've still got Almer on, and did they get? They got somebody else. I'm sure they're in for somebody else. Um, but the I, Ashley's just went. Alan saying Maxim him. Uh, Ashley's just went. Fuck you, Rafa. <laughs> and uh, you know, fair play. Newcastle fans are winning out of it. You know what I mean? They've got a Jordy in charge. You know whether they like him or not at this point. I don't think it's very fair. Um, and the the owner's finally putting his hand in his pocket and he's just dishing money out for players, which it's about time. So they could be. 
that that could be a very competitive match, you know. Bruce will be right up for that. And the Geordies at home, especially against somebody like Arsenal, they probably, I think I'm not going out on them and saying they've got an okay record. 2-1 win, 2-1 loss the last two games. Newcastle at home, one, yeah, it's been tight. You know, Newcastle have always been in amongst it, certainly the last couple of games. And uh, maybe I'm thinking about that for each game. Did uh, Papi Cissé scored in that, maybe? Demba Bat. I'm going on a tangent, I do apologise. Joey Barton, best T.O.T. now. I don't know what I'm thinking of. Is he in that team? Well, that was ages ago. Jesus. Uh, sorry for the tangent. <laughs> Bad for them. And then the headline act of the day, Man U Chelsea. That is going to be uh, media central, you know. Uh, <laughs> who's going to be playing? Who's going to win? Lamps v Solskjaer. Pogba v, I guess, Pulisic or Barkley. <laughs> it's hard to say, really. Who's going to be the standout? Giroud. It could be, you know, who's going to be the big man for Chelsea. It's hard to tell at this point. They've got a lot of solid pros and, you know, Pedro and William. You know what you're going to get from them. And then the most exciting team in France, other than PSG probably at the moment, uh, is Lille. And yeah, Lyon fans might be like, what? Right, just a bit of controversy, why not? I'm just chatting nonsense. But Lille, very exciting team. <laughs> Playing nonce at home. Um, and again, anyone on Index is going to be watching that game very keenly. And anyone who does go and run and push the PB win close, they don't need to win it. But anyone who pushes that close, you'll see a, a healthy rise on. And in PSG, they're probably going to win 10 0. Um, and we'll see how the stats fare. I made a joke on the, ma the video I did with FI Manager the other day, but we'll see how many points Cavani earns, you know, with the amount of chances he famously misses before he can score. That will be very interesting and very telling. And we don't have any Monday night football, which I thought we might have, which is weird, but cool. So that's match day one, guys. Very excited about it, very, very pumped. I want to get your thoughts if you're still around here. Um, get your thoughts in the comment section below who are you holding who are you most excited to see on match day one what are you most interested about with the scoring matrix what do you think is going to tell the most in the first weekend um, thanks a lot for tuning in guys like, share, subscribe, retweet all that good stuff see you on the next one stay out of trouble bye bye